Taxonomy. That's the classification and naming of living things. Who was the first person to name the living things? Adam. Well, he probably didn't name them in Latin, but the Bible says he named them. There was a fellow by the name of Carolus Linnaeus. He was a Dutch person, I think it was Carl von Linney, and he changed his name to Carolus Linnaeus because he did set up this classification system in Latin and he took out a Latin name. He had a scientific system that's still used today. There's seven chief groups to classify the living systems. For example, the first one is the kingdom. And I think the, the two kingdoms that you'd think of most of all would be the animal kingdom and the plant kingdom. So we'll just stick right now as an example with the animal kingdom. Then the animal kingdom is subdivided into phylum. This would further break it down, and there are about 20 or more phylum, and a mammal would be part of what's called chlordata. And then class is a finer division yet. Class members have more in common than do members of a phylum. For example, mammals, reptiles, birds, all are chlordata. Mammals have hair on their bodies. Milk their young. We showed you that picture of the platypus, which is also a mammal, even though it swims and lays eggs. Reptiles, on the other hand, are a different class. They have scales on their bodies. Birds have feathers, so that would be a finer breakdown. Then there is the order. Carnivora, for example, these eat flesh, while insectivora would be those that eat insects. Then narrowing it down even further yet is the family. For example, this family, the Philidae, just like wolves and cats, they usually have long snouts, bush tails. On the other hand, Philidae, which have short snouts and short hair. And then there's the genus, which is further yet. Genus consists of very similar groups, but members of different groups usually cannot breed with one another. Like, for example, coyotes and timber wolves are in the same genus, the canis thing. And then there's the species, and this is the interbreeding. This is what can breed one with another. This is the seven groups in the scientific system of classification. Let's give an example. The cat family, that's the Felidae. Include in that family tigers, lions, leopards, mountain lions, or called puma or cougars. There is a two part nomenclature system. Most animals then would be named by two parts the genus, which is the group, and the species, which is the kind. These are the last two parts of the seven classification. The same animal can have different common names. For example, the puma might be called one place, that, the cougar another place, in California they call them a mountain lion. But they're the same animal, the same scientific name, Felis concolor, Felis being the genus and concolor being the species. Domestic cats would also, the genus would be Felis, but instead of having Concolor as the kind, it's called Catus, which is domestic Catus. And these here would be all interbreeding, no matter whether a Persian cat or, or some other Russian cat or something else. How does the ability to classify plants and animals confirm the Genesis account? One of Carolus Linnaeus's objectives in systematizing the tremendous variety of living creatures was he wanted to equate what was known as the species to the biblical kind of Genesis. He believed in what was called the fixity of species. In other words, one species couldn't change to another, which is what we believe, couldn't evolve into one another. So this was one of the purposes. Now let me just say this, the main point of me putting this chapter in the book is to show you that if evolution was true, we couldn't classify them. There wouldn't be these distinct differences of animals that can't interbreed one with another. Taxonomy itself, the ability to classify, 
rather than there be a blur of evolutionary creatures, helps confirm the Genesis account. These gaps allow plants and animals to be classified. Let me just close by saying this. Creationists explain these similarities of homology by a common designer. Evolutionists take the same thing and try to show common ancestors. I want to say this. If our atmosphere was gasoline and oxygen, maybe God would have designed this with carburetors. But he didn't. And the reason why we have lungs and Apex lungs is because it's a good design for our atmosphere, which he designed.